Hello everyone, Chicken Keeper here, welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program. This episode is going to be a little bit different. Um, I'm recording the audio and post commentary and the video is obviously a time lapse. Because if I hadn't made it a time lapse and I'd, all re and I'd recorded it all live, this video would probably be about two hours long. Um, <laughs> what I was basically doing um, was something that I mentioned a couple of episodes ago. I basically launched four fuel tankers and docked them all to the space station uh, so it can now function as a fuel station as well uh, for ships so I don't have to launch quite as much mass into space and it makes building interplanetary ships a lot easier as well as refueling them um, just do, you know having various transport ships going around and stuff. Um, also I decided to launch the actual tankers. These tankers were meant to refuel the tanks that would, would be docked to the station. But I actually realized it would probably be easier just to have the tanks as the tankers themselves. So that whenever a tank runs out, it can just de it can just undock and deorbit itself. And then you just launch another tanker to replace it. Um, it would just save, save quite a lot of time and effort. Um, the actual flight was pretty smooth. There was an issue though, um, where the fuel tanker rocket, the the asparagus staging was 90 degrees off, which meant that the wrong ones detached first, the wrong pair detached first. Um, so that meant that it, everything was a little bit sideways and it liked to roll quite a lot. When you detached the first pair of, of um, tanks and you got out of the upper, you got out of the lower atmosphere, sorry, uh, and the atmosphere was, was uh, thin enough, it would start rolling uncontrollably. But that wasn't really a problem. Um, it was only quite a gentle roll, and it you could still keep it on track. Um, but the rest of it was very smooth. You can see this in four times speed. Uh, though I'm only going to show one um, launch and rendezvous, and the rest will just be the start of the launch and the actual rendezvousing section and the actual docking sequence, um, just so you can see it. All the flies were fairly uneventful. Um, I had a slight mishap at the very beginning where I was a little bit trigger happy with the staging button and I accidentally separated the fuel tanks before they'd run out and the whole thing exploded, um, which wasn't fun. It's a good job it's drone controlled. So, but the rest of it um, was very, very quick and easy, actually. Um, this particular one was probably not the smoothest. I think the last one was, was the smoothest because I'd got the hang of it, but it wasn't actually the worst. Um, Everything went pretty well. The docking sequence, the do the rendezvousing sequence. Sorry, it was quite easy because all you have to do is is get into an orbit, and then at the either the ascending node or the descending node, just add a maneuver um, that will correct the roll. And then you can also, if you time it right, if you launch at the right time, um, and have a bit of guesstimation in there as well, you can actually combine the bur the inclination change burn with um, the actual rendezvousing burn and then if you just add uh, so that you'll get within a kilometer of the the thing that you're trying to dock with all in one maneuver and then once you, you're at the closest point to the the thing you're trying to dock with you can just um, burn or do another burn to circularize your orbit and then it's just a matter of using the RCS to get in close so here I am about six kilometers away closing fast and getting ready to do a burn. I realized I was burning in the wrong direction to begin with. Um, completely the wrong direction. Well, not completely the wrong direction. I was sort of... I, I sh Yeah, actually completely the wrong direction. <laughs> I was burning away from it instead of towards it. Because um, I thought that that was what you were supposed to do, even though it did look wrong. And yes, it was wrong. So I'm not sure why. As in, I thought you were supposed to burn towards that little purple marker, um, the one that's triangular rather than the one that I'm pointing towards at the moment, um, which would then cancel out your la your relative velocity, but it didn't. Um, so I'm not sh quite sure what's up with that. Uh, I might have just misunderstood what the procedure was exactly. But the rest of it was fine. They're, they're, there's plenty of fuel in these tanks. Uh, as long as you do it right, the tank you'll still have a little bit of fuel in the... Um, the nacelles, the tanks that are fueling the nuclear engines, um, uh, even after you've docked, so they're very, very efficient ships. 
although um, it's not quite enough fuel to return home with, but you've probably got enough RCS. Though using three nuclear engines did make the orbital insert the orbital burn very slow, um, but at least it wasn't too slow. It was just just fast enough. Oh, yeah, I realised I was coming in a little bit faster, so I just gently um, cancelled out some movement and stuff and positioned myself. And then I, I switched to orbital view um, to actually dock, because it's easier. Though it makes the planet look a lot smaller for some reason. It's just be an optical illusion. A lot of RCS used. But it's got two tanks of RCS, so it's not like it's going to run out. Because the RCS is also supposed to be used to refuel other ships as well. Not really just be used by the station. Um... Because RCS is a pretty val it's just as valuable as normal fuel, really. So having plenty of RCS made sure that um, the station would never run out, and neither would any ships that dock to it. Yeah, this was a an almost nighttime docking, though. Luckily, because of the all the lights on the station and the fact that the sun still um, shines light on ships even in in the darkness at the moment, that this will be fixed in point nineteen. Um, I think anyway. Um, it did. Luckily, because all the lights and stuff, it wasn't too hard. And do <laughs> it wasn't quite square on, but it was enough. And that was the end of that one. It went very smoothly. I still had a full tank of fuel and everything. And on to the next one. Um, there was something else as well. <laughs> I just suddenly forgot what I was about to say. Then, oh yeah, I have to wait until the the space stations about right in the back in the right position oh I think this is the one that went a bit weird uh, I'll have to just see yes this is the one that was a bit scary I started the burn to decelerate uh, the well to reduce the relative velocity too um, too late and uh, I came within meters of the solar panel array you can see Oh, <laughs> yeah, I missed it by meters, um, going at over 50 meters a second. Because what I should have done was started the burn so I would finish the burn when I got to the station, rather than I was halfway through the burn when I got to the station. So, yeah, <laughs> but luckily I missed it and, and I was able to rendezvous. And, uh, well, dock anyway. I was already rendezvoused uh, very easily. Oh, that was it. Yeah, because of the, the the size of the engines on the side, I was a bit worried that perhaps um, when I docked the ones, uh, well, when when the side ones were docked on, so say these two that I've uh, I've docked are the forward and backward ones, the uh, ones on the side, the engines might end up touching, which would prevent them from docking. So the other two, I I I docked upside down just as a precaution, but I don't I think that there's plenty of space. I don't think the engines are ever going to touch. Yeah, this is quite a cool sequence, this one. Just kind of parking it sideways. Even though I used the nice gentle lights, it's, um, it still kind of blinded the docking ports a little bit. Oh, there we go. Still no lag on the station, luckily, and it wasn't, um, wasn't too far off axis either. Axis? Axis. <laughs> I think the other two launches went fine though. That was the only slightly scary one. Oh no, actually no, this one went a bit wrong as well. <laughs> I forgot about this one, yeah. Um, yeah, you can see I, I ran out of fuel in the nacelle tanks. Um, the outer tanks fuel in the nuclear engines. So I had to transfer a bit of fuel from the main tank into those in order to dock them, but luckily I was, and I was still approaching the station as well, so I had to do it quickly so I could um, decelerate myself in time. Oh, I, I had plenty of time, really. But um, that was a little bit scary, but luckily I was easily far easily far from it, far enough away from it. <laughs> I don't know how you say that. But um, by the time I'd actually rendezvoused and docked, I actually only used a fraction of the fuel that was in there, perhaps just just a few units really so I was only out uh, out of fuel by a tiny bit a tiny margin so it wasn't too much of a problem um, 
So I, I and actually I don't think I used the engines afterwards, um, and I really didn't need to either because I'd actually used a lot less RCS, which might explain why I'd run out of fuel. Um, but yeah, I needn't have really refueled those tanks. Oh, I think the docking sequence as well wasn't the, wasn't the most perfect. Uh, it was all right. It's just that I approached it at a very slight angle, and it made everything wobble slightly, which also then. Um, put the station off axis, there you go, so I, I hadn't actually corrected the sideways movement <laughs> before um, the sideways position before I'd actually hit the docking port so it actually knocked the station slightly off axis which made the second, um, the fourth even, I can't count, <laughs> the fourth tank a little bit tricky to dock, um, to dock with it because I had to try and match the um, match the rotation properly there I am coming in. All the actual rendezvousing stuff, I don't need to show that because it was all exactly the same as the first one. It's pretty standard stuff. Yeah, but this was definitely by far the smoothest. Coming in nice and steady. <laughs> also, it's quite convenient that um, I always approached near the the port, um, well in the direction of the docking port, I didn't have to sort of dance around the space station at all, which is quite cool. I always, uh, it was just pure luck that I always managed to to approach uh, at an open docking port even when, or, well, even when the other three docking ports are actually filled. So all these um, lower docking ports are taken up by the fuel tankers and then the uh, there's four upper docking ports that I'll probably attach um, extenders to which will allow for even more docking ports but those will be for the ships themselves uh, and there's there's easily enough clearance between the solar panels and the fuel tanks so it's not there shouldn't be any problems with that but I might attach extenders just to make sure and uh, to allow space planes to dock easier as well there we go, coming in. All the lights from the other ones, uh, the the other tanks, were actually making, uh, as well as this this one that I'm docking, actually made the port so bright that I actually had to turn the light off so I could see it properly because it was just a bit too saturated. There you go, it's slightly tilted there. And actually, it took ages to write it as well because of the huge weight that it now had, that the station now had, and the very few gyroscopes it had. Um, Actually, correcting that tilt took ages, um, but luckily um, I managed to do it, no problem. So, boing. There you go. So you can see the side ones are um, are upside down compared to the forward and backward ones. I'm not sure how you'd say that, but and there's me just tilting it. This is a four times speed, and it's still very very slow. And a quick time warp to lock it in place. And SAS. And there's the finished station. Well. Wow mostly. That's with the tankers on anyway. So, um, yeah, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.